In speculative science fiction, we often try to extrapolate current technologies forward to see where they may end up in the far future. Perhaps the currently most famous example of this is artificial intelligence. And within myth and fiction, this is a very old idea. Indeed, the ancient Greeks had a concept of a being, not human, made of bronze, though it was not in most versions of the story completely artificial. Since then, many iterations of mechanical beings with human-level intelligence have appeared in fiction, leading to a veritable explosion of the idea during the 20th century, ranging from dystopian to utopian viewpoints of AI. This happened as a result of a general feeling that such a thing was getting closer to reality, and AI would be the end result. There are many examples, HAL 9000, R2-D2, Mr. Data, one in particular that I always found haunting was Lester Del Rey's short story, Helen Alloy, from 1938. Still a very sad and resonant story all these decades later. Indeed, my own book, Supermind, features aspects and warnings of advanced artificial intelligence and its effects on society. The reason AI is such fertile territory in science fiction is because there are many paths it could take in development for better or worse. There are thousands of stories hidden in the subject of AI, and no doubt, more will come. Even Frankenstein can be seen as a rather bizarre form of artificial intelligence, in that the monster was an artificial being, albeit made up of flesh and bone still, but cast in a very different sense from actual biology, and ultimately yielding a creation that was not the sum of its original parts, but instead something new. But throughout our development of AI in the real world, one thing that has become abundantly clear is that it is a human technology, an invention of ours, that bears as many traits as it can that mimic a human by design. We talk about such things as the uncanny valley and making robots seem as lifelike as possible. And even when we don't, they often mimic animals because of function, robotic security dogs being an example. As a result, our AI is fundamentally anthropocentric from the start, with the aim of becoming even more anthropocentric as development continues. AI will become increasingly human-like, at least for a while, until it surpasses us and perhaps also becomes something new in its own right. Frankenstein indeed. This also means that AI developed by alien civilizations actually may end up remarkably alien should we ever encounter such a thing. It may not behave as a human, but rather a true alien. It's possible that an interaction with an alien AI will be incomprehensible, a serious problem in SETI because chances are if we ever do get an alien signal sent our way by an alien species, it'll probably be an artificially intelligent machine that sent that signal out. It may even be that at some point in technological development, biology itself goes obsolete and all alien civilizations invariably convert themselves into machine civilizations, and that such a trajectory exists for us too at some point. There are many advantages to a machine civilization, almost too many to count. So long as you can make things like transferring consciousness into a machine framework happen, but aliens may not care about such problems, they may simply copy themselves, or parts of themselves, rather than transfer and leave it at that or even develop a machine civilization so superior to their original form that they choose to go extinct on purpose in favor of that machine offspring. The bottom line, of course, is that we don't know how aliens would develop their AI. We just know how we humans anthropomorphize our own. But in a broader sense, AI also offers us one of the few truly viable ways to explore the galaxy within the laws of physics. At its most basic, this is just a space probe. We've already sent these out. Robotic exploration in the solar system makes up the bulk of what we have done in space, so far outside of Earth's orbit. It's much easier, safer, and cheaper to do it with robots than it is sending out humans. This effect gets worse with interstellar travel. Sending humans to the nearest star system would be a multi-generational trip that few are likely to take because with our lifespans, as they are right now, Anyone embarking on that trip is sure to die en route, and never make it to the destination, which would be left for their offspring, born in space, somewhere down the line. But this issue goes away with a robotic mission. Robots can last dormant for centuries if they are built right, 
and they do not care about the passage of time. A variation of this idea is the von Neumann probe. I've mentioned them many times over the years. But to recap, this is simply a probe that can build a copy of itself, which in turn can then build a copy of itself, until exponentially this virus or bacteria-like reproduction cycle fills the entire galaxy with these probes, at comfortable sublight speed, until in a few million years, the entire galaxy has a probe in every star system. One thing about this type of probe is that if it is an AI rather than just a mindless factory, it could actually do some very interesting things. One commonality that alien computers and our own computers will have is a shared concept of mathematics. Computers do not work without that. It defines them. But there may be a further commonality, and that is networking among the von Neumann probes. If they do indeed have a presence in all star systems in a galaxy, then communications between the probes could happen, albeit constrained by the speed of light. But if your probes do not care about the passage of time, then slow communications will still allow them to communicate and transfer information to each other. They would not make a particularly good hive mind or collective, however, because of the communications delays. It can take a 100,000 years for a message to cross the Milky Way, after all. So real-time thinking is unlikely, and since we have no way to send meaningful information faster than light, then we can't really speculate here without invoking a unicorn. But even if they operate semi-autonomously but still communicate slowly, then the dissemination of collected data on the star systems each member is stationed in will still be there. It wouldn't be an exercise of collective thought, rather one of collective memory, a von Neumann archive of the history of the galaxy, since the onset of intelligence within it. What that data might be is a tricky subject. A star system that has no planets at all, or one that just has a run-of-the-mill main sequence star sitting in it, acting as normal as it can for its class, may not be of interest to a self-replicating probe, especially if there aren't any easily obtained raw materials in that system from which to replicate another probe. But cluttered star systems such as the solar system might be of great interest, or not. But it pays to remember here that if von Neumann probes use up star systems, as in all of the raw materials of them, then the solar system has either been intentionally spared, or no one makes von Neumann probes of that type. So far the solar system does not appear to have ever been mined, but it's also possible that once enough probes are made, then probe production simply ceases galaxy-wide, and civilizations that appeared early enough to have covered the galaxy build in a kill switch to stop production, and avoid the depletion of the galaxy of raw materials until there is nothing left but probes. But a self-replicating probe also will have the ability to 3D print most anything at once. There isn't much of a difference between printing out the parts to make a copy of oneself and printing out probes to explore more directly the planets of a star system. Oddly, this may even extend to biology. It can be envisioned that an advanced enough probe could actually print out organic creatures, which really are just a kind of technology when you think about it and basically print out a group of colonists if it wanted, or hybrid android biological specialized machines. Basically whatever configuration best fits the intended use of what's being printed. This has an unusual effect. If technology that advanced can in fact be realized, then rather than meeting an alien through the usual vision of Star Trek, meeting on a ship and shaking hands, it may be that you first meet an alien machine the 3D prints out the alien on demand for you to interact with. Speculative as though those technologies may be, they do lie within the realm of eventual plausibility, even though we are currently nothing close to being able to even create a 3D printer that can mine and manufacture materials, much less make a functional copy of itself, and then take a step further and print out something biological, but it can be envisioned with enough advancement. The question is, why study the galaxy with millions or billions of probes? Well, in one sense, you really don't need to do it for very long. The reason is simple. Once you know everything you can reasonably know about stars and planets, there may be no reason to further monitor them. As a result, it may be possible that all von Neumann probes, currently in the galaxy if there are indeed any at all, are non-functional and extinct. Again, by way of another kill switch. 
get rid of the probes after their usefulness has ended, and they never get corrupted by too much exposure to things like cosmic rays, and do not return home and disassemble their star system of origin. And corruption itself may eventually lead such a probe to being non-functional, acting irrationally, or ceasing to self-replicate. But the other reason to monitor the galaxy would be the emergence of life and civilizations. Here the probes would be selectively sent to star systems with habitable zone planets, and the prospect to eventually see an abiogenesis event, or have already undergone one. This makes sense for monitoring for scientific purposes. You may want to catalog all known life in the galaxy for science, as we do with cataloging the species of Earth. Perhaps all science in a galaxy has that philosophy of learning and discovery, and the idea that aliens would not be interested in primitive planets like Earth is incorrect, and that we would be of great interest to alien scientists because we have passed a bunch of potential great filters. That may make us very rare for all we know, or at least interesting enough to monitor by way of a von Neumann probe parking in the solar system and watching and printing out further local probes to keep an eye on us and our development. It might also be a matter of security. There may be new areas in physics or technological development, such as the ability to produce artificially intelligent interstellar probes, that require monitoring just in case the civilization developing them goes too far with it and presents a threat to the rest of the civilizations in the galaxy. But science and cultural studies alone remain a likely driver for data collection. And if that data on all civilizations in a galaxy is shared among probes, then things get really crazy. So imagine a scenario where you have an all-powerful, godlike probe of this nature sitting in your star system watching. If it can study you, and it can print out biology, it can print out a human and potentially do it anywhere in the galaxy that has had time through the probe network to receive the data on Homo sapiens, or even specific people. Even further, if the desire is to print out a dinosaur, which has had time to propagate across the entire Milky Way many times over, there could be probes across the galaxy printing out T-Rexes, even clones of a sort, of actual individuals that once lived millions of years ago. If such things are useful for whatever reason, but also may print out examples of biology found in the galaxy, or variations designed for a specific purpose based on those species or even completely distinct custom creatures of whatever biology fit for whatever purpose the probe has for them. A highly speculative scenario, most definitely. Will we do it anytime soon? Not likely without a technological singularity, which I personally think those happen far more gradually than some envision. And certain areas may never be pursued, such as artificial generalized intelligence. But an interesting concept indeed for a somewhat cold November evening. Thanks for listening, I'm futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, addressing those that may be saying to yourselves, hmm, what he described sounds a lot like the UFO UAP phenomenon as it has been described. And he'd be right, there are parallels that can be drawn. I remain a skeptic of an alien origin for that subject, but yes, it actually is physically plausible through known science that such a phenomenon could be the result of this scenario. Spooky indeed, make of it what you will. And be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channels for regular in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.